Hey, Newbie Dan here. I'm going to show you how to make a fence for a crosscut sled out of a section of 2x4. All you need is a table saw and a reasonably straight, dry section of 2x4. For smaller sleds like this one, which is 18 inches wide, I find it easier and quicker to make fences this way. In fact, it only takes a few minutes to create fences that are clean and straight. If this sounds interesting to you, stick around. Here's a typical crosscut sled. The end that's closest to you when you make a cut is generally considered to be the rear. You want the rear fence to have a nice straight face, or you probably won't be able to align the fence correctly, and you'll get inconsistent cuts. The front fence doesn't need to be nearly as straight since you don't place your stock against it. So we'll make two fences, then decide which one has the straightest face, and use that one for the rear fence. Start with a section of 2x4 that's dry and as straight as you can find. When I say straight, I'm talking about looking at it down the narrow edge, like this. And actually, you only need a straight section that's as long as your fence will be. If you have to go out and buy a 2x4, make sure it has KD stamped on it, which means kiln dried. The HT here means heat treated, which I think means it's been treated to kill pests. It shouldn't cost much at all. Compare a few 2x4s so you can find a straight one. Out of these two, obviously, you want the one on the right. Now's a good time to make sure your blade is at 90 degrees. If it isn't, your fences may lean a little. I'm using a magnetic angle gauge here. There's a link in the description below. Before I go any further, I make sure all the staples are removed from the 2x4. Saw stops don't react well to metal. They think it's a body part because it conducts electricity. Cut two fence pieces from the 2x4, the right length for your sled, which for me is 18 inches. It's probably best to cut them with a chop saw, or a circular saw, or a hand saw. I have this humongous sled, and this is one of the reasons why. I'll do a video on this sled at some point in the future. After you cut the two fences, check to make sure they're pretty straight. If they curve just a little, that's probably okay. Before you start, raise your blade all the way up. The maximum height your fence can be is the height of your blade, minus a quarter to a half inch. So for me, since my blade is a little over 3 inches, my fence height will be a little under 3 inches. Everything from here on out should be done to both fences. We'll start by cutting off one of the narrow edges. Cut off at least enough to remove the rough surface, and rounded edges, if any. In my case, since I have about a half inch to play with for both edges, I trim off about a quarter inch. Now set your fence to the height you determined earlier, which in my case is a little less than 3 inches, and trim the other edge. Then do a final double check just to make sure the fence is shorter than the max height of your blade. Now's our chance to make the fences as straight as possible. If you have a planer or a jointer, then use that. But for those of us who don't, we're going to be doing some resawing using our table saw. Raise your blade all the way up and set your fence for a cut that'll remove the rough surface and rounded edges if any. It's okay to cut a little extra off. There's plenty of wood here. Take your time and don't rush. Make sure you use a good push stick or two and don't stand in the way of any possible kickback. Here's an important safety tip I just accidentally learned, and fortunately, I didn't literally learn it by accident, but it was close. I always set the blade to just a little higher than my stock, and since I most often cut 3 quarter inch stock, that means about this high. As I ran the first fence through the saw, I did something that I won't be doing anymore, I can assure you. I normally use my fingers to help keep the stock pressed to the fence, and of course I put my fingers short of where the blade comes out of the table. By itself that might be okay, but this time I didn't think about the fact that with the blade raised all the way up, it comes all the way down to here. And that means I might have had my finger over the blade while trimming off a very thin off cut. At any point, my finger could have come in contact with the blade. And even with a saw stop, that's obviously something to be avoided. At this point I had only cut one fence, so I immediately stopped and downloaded Matthias Wandel's plans for his push sticks, and I made one. There's a link in the description below. From now on, my plan is to use this push stick in my left hand to make sure I don't ever get near the blade again. Let's see how it works. It works pretty well, actually. I think this push stick is a keeper. 
After the cuts are done, check to make sure you've got 90 degree edges so the fences will stand straight. If not, recheck your blade for 90 degrees and trim a little more off. I use this set of precision squares I got from Amazon. I really like them and they come in a nice wooden case. As with everything else, there's a link in the description below. Highly recommended. Finally, find the fence with the straightest face and mark it. That's going to be your rear fence and the face that you'll be placing your stock against. I don't really recommend using 2x4s for fences that are longer than about 18 inches because the longer the section of 2x4, the harder it is to make the faces straight by resawing on the table saw. If you're using a jointer, you can probably go longer. At this point, you can leave your fences just like this. They'll work just fine. Or you can do some finishing work. I'm going to round over the edges and do a little sanding. So first, I mark which edges are going to be the bottoms so I don't accidentally round over those edges. It doesn't really matter which edges will be the bottom, I'm just picking the edges arbitrarily. I'm using a roundover bit on my router to round all the edges except the bottoms. You could also just sand them to remove the sharp edges. I have to keep checking which edge is the bottom because I'm notorious for doing the wrong edges. I will be cutting a chamfer on the rear fence, but not yet. When we're lining the fence, we need to be able to put a square up against it, and the chamfer makes it almost impossible. In a future video, I'll show how to build a sled using this fence. This video is part of an ongoing series about table saw sleds, which includes crosscut sleds, box joint sleds, runners, fences, or whatever else I can think of or you can suggest. So make sure you keep an eye open for other videos in this series. I hope you enjoyed this video and learned something from it. If so, please give it a thumbs up and consider leaving a comment. Thanks! Check out the description for links to products seen in this video. Just scroll down, click Show More, and scroll down until you see the links. And if you like what I do here, click that subscribe button, and don't forget to ring that bell to get notified about new videos. Thanks!